Hey everyone, I'm here again with Taylor. I'll put his the descriptions to his social media in the link below and go check out the earlier podcast. I think it was called um, Inner Child as the Core Essence and the Eleven Laws. And I just wanted to start talking about, since you just had tea, um, could you tell us just about a few a few of the main herbs that when people are not used to incorporating herbs into their health regimen, like what are some of the first ones that pop into your head and why that people can start using? Well, you know, most Americans, well, most people in the world are really uh, going through financial struggles, you know, and a lot of people going, you know, at, it's like what? They say less than 5% of Americans have 10000 or more in their bank account. So yeah. usually people, when they're focused on money so much, like how it is, um, it's, you know, that if they're going to be destroying their kidneys. It just comes with that anxiety over money that's usually, you know, not feeling supported, you know, and then you get the lower back pains that come that coincide with the kidney swelling. Mm -hmm. So I, you know, with a lot of people, I always, I, I like to suggest a stragglers. You know, I know it's, uh, a lot of people would say it's hybrid or whatever, but just for the kidneys and the lymphatic system and, and the spleen, I feel like uh, a stragglers is, is going to give people a, a quick contrast so that they can see the power of herbs. A stragglers and, and red clover marry well together, especially for like infections. And, mm -hmm. um, Anything with like you know cleaning the blood, red clover is the uh, is the truth in general. You know, for if you got those heavy metals and the pesticides, herbicides, all those things in your blood, then the red clover is, is definitely gonna uh, give you some contrast to when how it feels to get those things out of your blood mm -hmm. <laughs> at least momentarily. You know, at least momentarily or some of it. So you know, I, I always uh, suggest those two as like a tandem. And then, um, since, you know, a lot of people are, uh, sugar addicts and, and, you know, a lot of us are, have a candida overgrowth, um, I always say black walnut and, um, wormwood capsules. And then if you're, uh, sensitive to tree nuts and like, wal you know, like walnut, then, um, you should, uh, black walnut, I mean, but you should probably get, uh, milk thistle, dandelion root, burdock root, maybe sarsaparilla. Yeah. And, um, or sarsaparilla. <laughs> but yeah, like, you know, it's a. Uh, what's candida? Candida is a fungus that, uh, you know, in, in, uh, in small amounts, it, it, it really is kind of benign in the, um, digestive tract, but most people just feed the candida so much. Like, it's, don't feed the candida. <laughs> it's, uh, okay. It, they, it, yeah, it, it converts, um, you know, when you eat things that, that you can't digest, like, or if you have bad food combinations, or if you have, uh, if you eat more than the size that you can eat in one sitting, because your hand's like the, the hand, your hand is the size of your, um, your like fist your fist? is the size yeah. of your stomach. Yeah. So, and whenever you eat more than that, or if you eat bad food combos, or if you, um, are eating, uh, high ethanol foods or foods that are just high sugar, the candida uh, converts those sugars and the ethanol to alcohol so that it can further break it down and um, to process it. You know, a lot of the food that people are consuming, they, they can't even really process it, so they need these parasites. They need candida overgrowth. So you will feel, uh, see, a lot of people will go through intense anger, you know, as they purge these things because it creates a discomfort in the body, you know. Mm -hmm. um, if you uh, if you take some of these herbs, it, it might bring it might bring up your anger. But um, that's why you know, astragalus and red clover out it, it's easy to kind of jump to because it's a blood cleanser and uh, it just relieves a lot of anxiety that comes with the kidneys being uh, you know, damaged and. Um, yeah. yeah. From yeah, from there, just I, was, I jumped to liver. I begin the lymphatic and in, uh, in the blood with the red clover and the astragalus. I jumped to liver. You know, milk thistle, burdock, dandelion, and then black walnut and uh, wormwood capsules. 
just because a lot of people probably couldn't stomach tasting wormwood and the oils in it blend really well with the black walnut oils to create an environment that, you know, it can stop up that garbage and push on the tissue and get a lot of that, uh, that garbage off the walls. Cause you know, all these, these, these herbs are pushing on the tissue and then the tissue snaps back and then that releases all the, the garbage on the walls. Like everything that people are eating is creating that plaque. And then that, that they get on their teeth is touch on that plaque is being created everywhere that their mm-hmm. food is touching. So that's what parasites, because your body can't process it if it's fake food. So it's going to create more plaque. So then, um, you have, you know, uh, the mucous membrane reacts and then, cause the mucous membrane is going to carry away all the dead cells and, um, try to, you know, attach itself to everything that you can't process so that it, it can be purged of you. So the mucous membrane is just trying to activate so that they can grab all the toxins and all the dead cells. But if you continually just take on these plaque forming foods, then you have the plaque starting to dry and calcify. And then the parasites live, they are supposed to be breaking this plaque down. That's the, the microbes that are eating the garbage for you mm-hmm. because one reason or another you're eating. So, you know, um, these microbes are, they lay their eggs, their larvae in the plaque. So the more plaque forming food you have and the more plaque you have in your system, the more that they can expand and they can take up ground in the system. So, yeah, it's really, uh, you know, it's, people just have to realize that the herbs that I'm suggesting here are going to push on the walls of the tissue and that all that plaque that's pinned into the wall like that is going to snap back when the, when the tissue pushes back. Mm-hmm. It's just like, you know, just the, the cause and effect that comes when these herbs are vibrating and pushing on everything. It's like, again, it's, it's helping the whole system breathe. It's just chopping, pushing on the wall, pulling that stuff out of there. And then, um, it's because there's no real pulling, you know, everything is a pushing. Like even when you inhale, you're pushing the lungs out. So it's just funny how everything is male and female at the same time too. It's just yeah. when you get extreme imbalances, you know, when that's forced, that male female gets forced into austerities is when sickness is happening. Like where it's just like the connection between male and female, that resonance is just shit. That's, uh, that's, that's the issue. But, <laughs> <laughs> if you can get the balance of it, then, or if that balance is just more commonly expressed, then, you know, it's just a lot more health in the people in general. Mm-hmm. Could you give a few pointers on just major, like, f- food combinations that are that are major problems for our system that people do commonly? People uh, have fat and sugar at the same time. They have, uh, you know, a lot of people. A lot of people mix fruits that would not um, process well together. They wouldn't marry well together, like sweet fruits together, acids and and uh, alone, pretty much with other acids, you know. And then, you know, melons alone. Everything you got to separate, you know, kind of, and just to, so that you can get the, cr- the proper processing of it. Because if not, you're gonna create alcohol, and then mm-hmm. it's just gonna expand the candida because the alcohol, you know. It's all that whole thing is just going to create obstruction. So the body is just going to constantly release mucus so that it can try to, you know, stop that up and push it down the line. Yeah, mucus and alcohol all, all yeah. over. Yeah. And they go hand in hand. Yeah. Do you have? So, a, sorry, go ahead. Nah, um, nah, I don't know what you you talking about food combinations. You know what I mean? It's like it just. Certain thing, you know, people are eating. People eat uh, cheese with bread. It's crazy. You know what <laughs> I mean, like certain combinations are just crazy. Like they're just absolutely ludicrous as far as like what you want to get processed. You know. Yeah, and both and, of like, those things are hardly food. food. Yeah, yeah, no, nah, it's just so many people eating those things. And I was what I was going to ask just a second ago was, do you have any recommendations about where people should get their herbs or their capsules and things like that to have them be the most effective? Uh, Star West Botanicals, probably, if you want to get bulk herbs. And then um, uh, at 
this point, you know, it, it was a difference in the herbs. I feel like they kind of, as far as the over-the-counter ones, you know, Oregon Wild Harvest used to be like a little bit better than Nature's, uh, was it Nature's Best or Nature's, the other one, the cheaper one? I forget, but that one, I, you know, I feel like there is negligible differences now. Mm-hmm. Not really much of a difference. I don't know if one just got worse or, yeah. you know, and, or, the, or, the, or the other one stepped up. I kind of can't tell, but I usually only use those if I can't. Like the capsules, opening the capsules and making tea and stuff. I don't use that. Like maybe if I was traveling or something. But if I have any say so, then I'm gonna always be pretty much with pounds of Star West Botanicals on deck. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. You know what I mean? Like it's just, yeah, yeah I, I like Star West. And have you ever tried growing any of your own herbs? Uh yeah, here and there. I had a little. I still do have a little herb greenhouse, but I haven't got it running. I haven't got, I have nothing going right now. I really can't. It snowed last night or and a little bit this morning, but, you know, so the weather hasn't le- really leveled out for me out here. I mean, I can make a greenhouse if I wanted to and try to grow some herbs, but, I mean, put my greenhouse back, you know, get it running. Mm-hmm. But, no, nah, I, I really don't grow herbs that much, man, you know. Like. You would hope they would just grow in the wild, of course, and then you could collect them, but. Yeah. No, it would be better. It would be better if I grew my own herbs. You know, like yeah. it just that I haven't honestly I haven't been in a position in my life in a long time where I was just like, yeah, you know, I'm cool with just staying here for a calendar year. Or something. Yeah. Like every, every something always comes up, but like six, seven months in, so then I'd be like, ah, I can't, <laughs> I, I can't, do, I'm not gonna be here. And like, it, but you know, I might be here for a while now. Yeah, I didn't know it snowed over there. Are you up high? Yeah, I am at the elevation of the yeah. snow line. Well. Yeah, it's like, it's really nice in the valleys around me, but I'm at the, I'm at, I'm at where the precipitation line is really like, it's, it's foggy all the time because it's like, it's like, if you were looking at it from far away, you would see the clouds in the mountains. It's like where I'm let, where that's where I live. So it's uh-huh. like, it's foggy, you know what I mean? Like, uh-huh. you know, it. But then it, it's just, it's crazy how, how delicate the balance is, like, as far as from hour to hour, like, you can just tell, like, how intricately related everything is as far as, like, the way things proceed over years, man. It's so delicate. People have no mm-hmm. respect for this shit, yo. It's really, really crazy. Like, uh, one hour goes this way, and the way it balances out, how everything reaches its head, and, it, like, yo, nature is amazing, like, Especially with microclimates when you're dealing with uh-huh. being out here and stuff like that. Yeah, like, it's, it's just crazy. Like, if, if it's warmer one hour, a different period of the day, then it's going to burn up all the clouds. And then it'll be, you know, it'll draw all that moisture up. And then, you know, the that'll all, all go into the, you know, the high, you know, higher levels. It'll take all the clouds that's basically the fog here, burn all that off, and then create higher clouds. And then it might rain, mm-hmm. and then it could be it could just be anything like any given day, like yeah. pretty much from like you know any hour. If it goes one way or another, like the little subtle changes can make the weather go a certain way. Like, and it's just wild, like how you can see a change if you just pay attention. You know what I mean? And it's, it's you just have to be outside. <laughs> huh? Everyone's just inside all the time, so. Yeah, yeah, no, it's a dope form of entertainment, man. If you yeah. just really watch it, like you know what I mean. But it's, you got—I think you got to be in a place for like a couple years to really see, like yeah, to understand how. it. Yeah, because you'll know, like if you stay here, like if it, if it if it was a dry March, it'd probably be a a way drier summer, and then we'll have more forest fires. So then it's just like the way that ripples. Like if you have more forest fires, then you have more. Uh, thunder and lightning storm and then like it changes the way the fall will play out and then that, you know what I mean that'll change the way the winter starts like mm-hmm. it's just crazy like how how this shit how little shit just change everything like, yeah like 30 days of herbs you know what I mean it's not really a big commitment people have been killing themselves on purpose for years and yeah. then they just 30 days of herbs is, you know a small change but it's gonna be huge contrast yeah. Yeah, that's it's good. Um, how did you come to wanting to live in that area in the first place? Like what attracted you there? 
or well, I was uh, I was in California and I was always kind of preparing for like I always really wanted to be in a remote place, you know, and um, at some level, like it was before 2012. I, I moved to California in 2008, so. Um, pretty much from like 2008 to 2011, I was like, I need to get a place up in the hills, man. So like, if anything happens, I could always <laughs> be all right and at least have some buffer. Yeah. And so that's pretty much what I did, you know. Um, just eventually uh, made the move to, to get a place out here because it's not too high, it's not too low. It's still like warm enough to where you know, I can have I have my shirt off today. It snowed this morning, but I can have my shirt off today mm-hmm. once the sun comes out because it's still the March sun. It's not February sun. It's like it's crazy how I don't know. Like it's it it, it always it's really nice. Like it, for like at least two to four hours of the day is nice every day for the whole year. Mm-hmm. And I, and I feel like I would take that two to four hours every day for the whole year. Than somewhere else where it, it's like extreme, you know what I mean? Definitely, where it like, yeah. You know what I mean? It, it'd be, you know, it could be any. Like when I was living in Jersey growing up, it was like, yo, know, I do not like life at all from like January second to uh, May thirty, yes. May thirtieth. You know what I'm saying? So yes. I'm like, man, this is too extreme. <laughs> like it's. I mean, it's really nice for the other half, but that's too extreme. Like, I need like the constant like. I don't know. It could, anything can happen, man. It could snow in July, but then it's going to melt so fast that it won't, it won't really won't really change your life at all. But it's just like, it's kind of cool. Like you can have, yeah, every day is pretty much going to be a, a period in the day where you could be shirtless and, yeah. you know, no, no shoes. You know what I mean? Very rarely is it like consistent bad weather. Yeah. Yeah, if- I feel that. That's super nice. So. Yeah. It's like I, I get the whole year in a day, pretty much, yo. Yeah. There's so many nuances. And, yeah. yeah. Do you know anyone out there? Like, or is it, are you seriously just um, hanging with yourself? I mean, I, I'm just hanging with myself. Like, I, I know the people that live closest to me. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I know my neighbors and everything, like, I, I definitely, like, if I interact with my neighbors, you know what I mean, we, we know each other enough, and, like, whether it's good or bad, like, we know each other enough, like, to know, you know what I mean, what, who's who and stuff. It's not, there's not many people up here. There's, yeah. only, there's nothing up here. You Only one common area where you would see people, or two common areas, the gas station or the post office, so. There's no other way that you would see another person. But you do see everybody just from them two places. Mm -hmm. Like, because there's only so many people. Mm -hmm. And, like, um, I don't know. Sometimes it's it's cool. Sometimes it sucks. You know what I mean? Like, it's, it's, you know, it's rough. Like, if I'm alone, then I I definitely want to leave some dogs up here. But then I'd be always worried that somebody do something to my dog. Mm-hmm. Like, it's different, man. People be crazy. Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy, yeah. The mountains is crazy, but, like, uh, I still, I feel like people, if people stole my, somebody stole my dog in, in the city when I was living in the city once. So, wow. I'm like, man, yeah. So, I'm like, man, anything can happen. He was too nice. I made him way too nice. <laughs> mm-hmm. He was such a good dog, yeah. But nah, so, <laughs> It was way too easy to uh, steal. Do you have some dogs that are harder to steal now? Are they more uh, intimidating? Yeah. Oh yeah, I mean, I got um, I got one like aggressive dog, you know what I mean? But she's not really aggressive with people that much. She'll bark at them and try to back them down, but she don't really want no problem. But, yeah. I mean, like, and then I got her two puppies that I kept, and then I got uh, the male that you know is the dad. So I got like a family of four with dogs. But like, <laughs> it's like, it's really. I can't, I can't bring them into town when it gets too hot. You know what I mean? And and mm-hmm. I got, I just be like, the damn, I like, you know, like it. <laughs> yeah, they're all pit bulls. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. I like, uh, I like being able to uh, go into town and bring a dog with me at least. You know what I mean? Bring at least one of them with me. I like, I, you don't know, they 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 so close, man. Like it's mad space to run out here, mad land. 
Mm-hmm. And they stay close. To, they just be up under me. And I just be like, damn, man, pit bulls are so needy emotionally. They're like, <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. Well, yeah, you have a whole family to take care of their emotions for now. So. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's nice. I'd really rather have pit bulls and, and, and things to defend myself with and higher ground and, and good air. And I can I can make the other part just meet whatever you need. I mean, everything else I'm i fill in the gaps any gaps they got need to get filled in. But mm-hmm. most people in this most people in this world want a lot more than just basic stuff like <laughs> clean water, clean water, fresh air, clear uh, mind, point. clear heart. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They want more. Yeah, like, yeah, <laughs> for, for some reason, they want way more things and end up getting way less. I don't get it. Mm-hmm. So let's, can we go back to our poor stressed out kidneys um, and the money question? So I I think that it's smart to, like everyone deals with money exactly where they're at, whatever debt they've got, whatever job they're locked to and with their health insurance, whatever that is. But um Ultimately, it's just completely true that our our money is, in my opinion, is not a good measure at all of the value that we exchange amongst each other, and we tend to exhaust ourselves in order to get money, and if health is our wealth, then we are being very unintelligent, and in a natural world, we would just be doing things for one another that represented like an evil energy exchange so that our lives are way more balanced. Could you talk a little bit about what your personal like um, awareness about money is? And I don't know how you look at it. I mean, there's, there's so many ways. To I know that's you know, like, a, like a completely <laughs> giant long podcast on its own on yeah. many, many levels, but nah, I guess so, I was leaning nah, towards that. No, nah, I'll go into what my, I guess some concepts of money that, I've uh, created to make sense of it. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Pretty much at this point, what I can yeah. you. I mean, you know, I guess all currency is in, is inherently inflationary because nothing's going to stand still, and you're going to constantly going to have to inject. It's uh, ridiculous. Some something you know value yeah. into the currency, and, you yeah. know, or some type of some type of liquidity has to be there. So. One way or another, it's got to be some type of adjustment of value. And I think they're inherently inflationary, inflationary, like just, especially fiat currencies, man. And like yeah. anything digital, anything intangible. It, I mean, you could, you could definitely dilute the metals and stuff and clip coins, mm-hmm. but it's probably a lot, it's just a lot more difficult to, you know, um, really pinpoint true, what true value is when you got uh, so many smoke and mirrors between uh the you know i guess the the person that inevitably taking on the debt and the people that are creating the debt mm-hmm. <laughs> there's yeah. so much in between there that it all just gets caught up yeah and like yeah, it's just you know it's definitely uh energy and it's definitely like an overall consciousness thing like at some level you know life kind of bends with the seasons of the consciousness and you know, it's longer seasons, and I just, I always just look at the government like, you know, they're just part of the, the consciousness season, like, you know, like, if if the subconscious mm-hmm. is more aware, or more brought, you know, or more dissolved, or however you want to look at it, then, you know, then I feel like you'll have a, a government that is, like, more loose, it's, like, there, but it's not there, like, you don't have to think about it, you know, mm-hmm. but... If you know, if it's if the subconscious, the greater the greater collective of the subconscious is more sleep, or however you want to look at that, mm-hmm. bigger, Sweet bigger iceberg fear. beneath. Then, yeah, I think that uh, that you know you're going to have uh, go, you know uh, totalitarian governments and you know dictatorships and things like that, and you know, you know oligarchies, all that type of stuff is just going to form of its own, and. It just seems to be like seasons of consciousness that make you have to 
bend in different ways monetarily, you know, and, and to where you have a basket of value, whether it be like services that you can uh, provide or mm-hmm. if it's uh, objects that you have or if you do have a fiat digital or intangible currency mm-hmm. that you can exchange at different periods of life throughout life or throughout civilization, I feel like that's pretty much what, you know, that's what keeps you being able to have value through generations and, you know, to maintain things that um, will, that, you know, make, have value at this point, whatever it is, whatever your service is in this adjustment. If you got to, if the whole economy has been in this way, you kind of got to be an acrobat and bend this way and create value within yourself, whether it be your services, your object, uh, and then, or intangible types of currency. It's just like, I just, I feel like you kind of always got to have all of it. Everything's multidimensional, yeah. you know, so nothing has to get, nothing has to get left out and like opportunities seem to present themselves. If you like, okay with having to position yourself or move with life in ways that, might go against, you know, your concept of yourself just for a moment, just so that you can, you know, get to a different space to where you can be more self-sufficient in, in, in the way that you create value. You know, like mm-hmm. if you, if you work at, if you work a job, then your value ultimately is still determined by them. Even if you rise in the company, it's still like them telling you, like, we've appointed you. Yeah. You know? But if you can, if you have a more self-sustained way of creating value, be it like you grow your own food or if you run your own business or if you uh, just generate value just in your just in your immediate uh, experience, are you generating value in this moment? And like, for you know, that's how I feel like for money to maintain it, you just got to be able to have all those things. Like people have, get equity off their homes, you know, and they can get, car loans and different things like that. So it just, there's so many ways that, you know, you can create more money or more value. Because that's what you're really after is the value. So like, whatever you got to do to create more value, that's what you got to do as far as the currency at the time. Like, you know, if you can buy a house for low, let the equity raise, and then you can, you know, then you loan, get the loans for, you know, uh, whatever, a car, small business or something that you can lean your house on, then you just have more, you know, you can get more active income in this way after being passive in another way. And it's just kind of like, that's what you got to do, really. Just know when to be passive and when to be active and, like, mm-hmm. just see them opportunities. It seems to always be an opportunity and, like, um, money itself seems like it will always, you know, exchange a value will kind of always seem like it'll be here at some level, like in a tangible sense and an intangible sense. Like, you know, you never know what people will value. You know, it should, if you listen to this music, I would have never thought a lot of people would have valued this shit. Oh my God. You know, it's, so, it's like, it really, it, you know, when it comes to that, with, with value, it's just like, you kind of want to have like your toes in a little bit of everything to where you can always shift. And then I guess just have your, your few honey pots that you can, uh, you can just, you know, run them till the well dries up and then turn it into something else. It's kind of like it, yeah, just being able to keep the money uh, liquid and moving, yeah, and, and um, not have it too locked up in assets so that you can always have something keep it moving. Yeah. yeah. Have you ever like um, invested in the stock market? I'm sort of. Yeah, I'm. Yeah. I don't know. I want to get out. I'm getting out. But yeah, I never. Um, I never invested in um, stocks or futures or none of that. Like, it's, yeah, it seems. I yeah, the whole concept of it's funny. I was actually just writing something about that. Like the whole concept of options and futures is so anti how I want to be thinking about my life. Like trying to project what. Um, what values things are going to have in the future instead of focusing on what value you're actually creating now. It's just the smoke, smoke and mirrors thing to drive yourself crazy, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah like, you know, money will come of itself. Like, if you, 
you know, if you have a service that people need, then money will come of itself. Yes. People are going to give you things for that service, one way or another. Like, yeah, whether it's money and, or not. It, yeah, you know, and, and especially if you enjoy the service, giving the service, then there's no way that money's not going to happen. Mm-hmm. It's just people got to be really real with uh, their real value system to find the real service that will make them feel content. Yeah. Definitely. That's a whole nother bag, though. Well, that's a good one. Yeah, <laughs> it, that's really about it. Because you know, people don't. I don't know. They really dug within, you know, past past that the concept of themselves, and they can see where they're not challenging themselves, or you know, to to maybe accept things or let go of things. Then. People can see it, man. People would. It's just, it's just so much attachment. And if you were to, if you were to really change your breathing pattern, you're just gonna get more in touch with everything else that is in rhythm. It's like just getting in your own rhythm, creating a rhythm, and then you're in that, and you, uh, you can, like, you know, you're in touch with that. So then, it's not like. And a rhythm that's being issued to you, like nine to five is like an issued rhythm. It's kind of not like with the circadian rhythm in a lot of ways. Like in some ways it is, it's like an adulterated, like, you know, it, yes. people can shift to it. It's not, it's not too drastic, but it's still like, it's not the way the energy isn't being spent in a, in a smooth way. Like as far as like, you know, the way people wake up and then the way they stimulate themselves to go and do things. Yeah, adulterated is a good word. Yeah. Huh? I said adulterated is a good word for it. Yeah, people are constantly using tomorrow's energy today through the stimulant. So they just get overall tired and they're just going to continue to get burnt out. And then, you know, when you're tired, you just make bad decisions and you just, you're just more likely to to fall to those those uh, seven deadly sins or whatever. You can probably just be more jealous and stuff, man. You, you're more tired. You know, you feel like that you deserve more because you're tired. Every time when you're tired, everything else just you just feel like even more is just worse. So yeah, uh, you know, people well, especially just emotionally not, tired. I mean, like you know, like yeah. stopped up emotionally tired, but. Yeah, uh, people are definitely emotionally burnt, traumatized, and um, it's yeah, it's just that it's exa- you're exhausted. You got a whole whole culture of people drinking coffee and stuff. It's like an, it's just an exhausted culture. Just yeah. exhausted. Yes. And, you know, it, it's just so many other stimulants besides coffee. You know, and. You know, complex sugars and stuff basically, basically stimulant. So mm-hmm. it's 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 just a wild place because people, the more they eat that way, then they breathe a certain way, man. And you know how your breath is how you live, and how you breathe is how you live. So, you know, yeah, you live how you breathe. So that transitioned to be perfectly into what I wanted to talk about next, which was understanding the uh, alchemical process of breath because I would say like the majority of the population right now has the baseline idea of how important breath is I mean of course not not the majority or anything but like there's a there's a ton of stuff out there about breath but I don't think that there's much understanding at least in me past just a bit of a mechanical idea of a full breath into really understanding like how your breath instigates a alchemical process for your whole consciousness. And so if you were going to try to explain alchemy to someone like me or someone who is like very aware of the idea that they want to have deep conscious breath in their life, but they don't have much understanding past that, what would you say to like as an introduction to alchemy? Oh, man. Um, the breath is kind of like how things form a natural Tai Chi, you know, inside and outside, parasympathetic and sympathetic. You mm-hmm. kind of got to always bring it, 
know, when it comes to alchemy. Oh, I'm gonna sorry, I'm gonna interrupt you before you really get going. Could you make? Uh, could you say the little blurb about why people get addicted to weed? Because that's obviously another huge one. Because it, it forces you into parasympathetic. Yeah. And yeah, why do people want to be forced into that? Like. Because they they deeply want to rest, you know, and yeah. they want to, you know, it, and 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 lung, the lungs carry grief, so. It's usually like they want to rest and put that grief down for a moment. It stops. It suppresses the, you know, the grief and the mm-hmm. sorrow in a person, and they want to just rest and let, let that that weight go for a moment. But it just creates more weight in the long run because it's continually beating on the lungs and the lymphatic system, and you know you're just going to carry more grief because yeah, it, you're not releasing the energy, so then you're not fully learning the lesson. So you just this where decay comes in, somewhere or another, but. Yeah, things. Yeah, because I mean, it's, it's forcing that hormonal release. You're not addicted to the drug. You're addicted to the hormonal response yes. to the drug. Yes. So yeah, that's what people don't realize. Yeah, they 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 are addicted to the idea of the food. The food, what the food creates, out chemically <laughs> and out chemically. Mm-hmm. So yeah, no. Nah, um, but I guess you know when you're dealing with physical alchemy or alchemy in general. Um, yeah, physical alchemy, the breath still physical. Yeah. But, you know, air is gas, it's still physical, dark matter is still physical. You know, at some level, it's just uh, a different density or however you want to look at it. These things uh, in the physical have, they form a natural Tai Chi, they always do. It's the inhale and the exhale, it's the positive and the negative, the black and the white or the dark and light, whatever it is, it's like the, that's the Tai Chi of things. It's just the duality of things. So, Whenever you are indulging in one thing or being uh, subjected to one thing, there is, it's, you know, the breath, it's just like the breath, everything flips and has to exhale or inhale and change and flip into it, its other side. You know, it's like if you are to be prideful, your pride is going to lead you into, if you continually be prideful, pride is going to lead you into eventually being shameful for having been prideful. Because uh. pride and shame. Pride and shame are the same yes. coin with two different sides. Mm-hmm. So once your your pride is all used up, then you live in shame, <laughs> and then it continues to pivot because it's all one one breath. So uh-huh. it's all the way you basically the way the pad the way you pattern your breath is going to create a different pivot, and then you know um, you can you just get in touch with a different paradigm of things, and where you're just you're constantly going into uh, a new a new pivot to where you kind of don't even know where you're going, but you have to, to accept that it, it's always taking you into a place of uh, where you should be, you know, back to re- it's returning you, to you. So whenever you, you know, accept the emotions and you fully experience them, stay observed to them, then you can watch. This is how, this all happen as you do more and more breath sessions. You'll get in touch with your emotional state. Mm-hmm. So as, the, as, you, as you watch the emotions, come through, become digested and expelled in your body or in your, uh, you know, in a, in a metaphysical way, mentally and uh, emotionally, you're processing these things and you can get those things out of your body, out of your constant, the, the Rolodex in your mind, Mm -hmm. then, you know, you can, um, you can see how life is constantly showing you how to let go more and more. Every breath is constantly bringing you back to this we're bringing you back to the breath to yourself, but let, forcing you to let go to where the the way your single breath is not going from pride to shame, pride to shame, where most people is. Mm-hmm. So like it, it it just changes to a different pivot, and your breath is just more full. And so the more that you live a life of complete breaths and balancing the breath out, like. You know, if you were being really sympathetic and you were working out and you were in a sympathetic nervous system and you were living in that fight and flight and uh, being active and playing, just experiencing that side of the Tai Chi, mm-hmm. then you know you know that you need to counter that with uh, something else. We got to do the Tumo breathing. And, you, you know... Just, the what breathing? Just any Tumo. It's uh, like the spell G-T-U-M-M-O or some people call it uh, Dumo. Mm-hmm. Um, it's D-U-M-M-O or T-U-M-M-O. So that's one or less breaths 
a minute, complete breath for a minute, and that'll bring you in the, the parasympathetic nervous system. And um, that's where you do all your healing. You know, that's where you can consciously go into the unconscious parts of you or the parts of you that you're, you know, you might have been ignoring and suppressing. Uh, and as you physically breathe properly, then you'll change your digestive habits anyway because you'll be pushing on those diaphragms and then that'll massage those organs and then you'll be processing food a lot differently and then you'll realize which foods get in the way of the breath, which ones swell up those organs. Yeah, and where, dehydrate too. You know, yeah, the breath, if the, the lungs can't fully expand and then your experience isn't the same, the breath session isn't the same as it would be when you have that, that fluidity in there in certain areas and like, that all just gets shown like once you get in touch with the full breath and the full silence of it to where it makes you getting in touch with both makes you allows you to like pierce the the paradigm, you know, to where mm -hmm. if, if you get in touch with sympathetic and then the parasympathetic and then you've balanced it and then you're in a, a state where your breaths are silent and you're doing an hour or more at a time comfortably, mm -hmm. and, you know, you, that's, that's a totally different state of being. Yes, that's so you beautiful. That point. You know, so like you're processing the breath so as they come so much more and you're addressing things as they come so much more. So it's, it's a whole other state of being to, to where you're, you're processing at a very high level. And like when things get in the way of that, they're it's evident immediately. Mm -hmm. So you, you just don't want that. You just don't want that anymore. It's just your value system changes where you just want to be more receptive to things. So that you can um, adjust accordingly, because you know that it's just it's just gonna be once you reach a certain level of awareness, you know you, you never go back. And once you fully experience it for yourself, you know, because like the way to test if the past is real is to practice the experiences of the past, you know, whatever it be. So things like tantra and things like that, and and the breath work. Once you really put in put in the work for these things to where you are now seeing the benefits and you got a silent breath going, then you just can, you totally get past duality. Your mm -hmm. consciousness has totally reached another level. Because if you have a silent breath and it's not obstructed and it's complete, then you, your perception of life, especially if you're in darkness, mm -hmm. there's no, you cannot perceive inhale and from exhale. It's all oneness. It's only the oneness. And the more you can incorporate that into your day, it's just, the more that you'll see how the alchemy presents itself, how the dark and the light present themselves and how they fold in, in the reality on all levels, on all uh, dimensions. Yeah. So the, the breath, is, yeah, the breath really, it really takes, it, it, it allows you to shatter any paradigm. Because the way it takes your consciousness to, you won't be able to come back saying that like, this is it, this is the only layer here. It's just, it's just so much more inside you. Yeah, and I don't know why it made me think of it, but it made me think of DMT. And I remember, I don't, I'm not sure if I even watched it. I just remember seeing the thumbnail of some video that you made on DMT about, could, I don't, I don't know what it was about, but I assume that I think it had something to do with it's like that your breath can do what DMT can do. I, I'm not sure what you said because I don't even know if I watched it. But um, do you? Yeah. 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 No, like that. It's it's a crazy thing, man. Because DMT, if you just hit the DMT, it's just such a crown chakra ejaculation all at once like that. <laughs> yeah. To where you just get you get so much light that you like kind of difficult to corral it. You know, you just got you gotta just do like uh, at least hour or two of breath session before if you want to retain the whole experience. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. and then and get the breath going in a rhythm, then hit the DMT, and then you can kind of keep it on the ground, bring it back to the ground, and assimilate it into your life. You know, because it's so much light at once, man. Mm -hmm. It's just so much light, but. It's dope, you know, it, it blows your, it blows your mind, you know, your mm -hmm. whole perception of, of, of reality is different after it, but like, you can get the same effect uh, as far as like the consciousness to, you know, if you're doing the breath work, you can get the same effect of total liberation from your body, you know, mm -hmm. total like ejection, total liberation from the body and total, or however you want to look at it, like to where 
there is no, you know, it's just, it's just all oneness. Yeah, I just wanted to say that I will. But the room's not as light. It's not as much. I mean, I've had breath sessions where I had, you know, different images and different flickerings and flashes, but it, it, you know, it's not the, your brain isn't as bright as when you are on a psychedelic or especially DMT, something like that. Like your brain is a lot more bright. So like, you do a breath session on shrooms or or acid or, um, you know, like I said, DMT, you know, if you get your prime your breath for it, then, you know, you, you'll you see so much more inside yourself, you know, when you, you'll be able to peak way more inside yourself with all that light on the inside. But when you're using the breath itself, it's just like a gradual, like, uh, incorporation into your life to where you just have your value system is it's changed because you're like, wow, I can feel this good every day, make myself feel this good. And it's not like unsustainable, like chemicals, you know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. DMT, you know, it's just not, sustain- you know, I, if you keep hitting it, then Obviously, it doesn't really affect yeah. you the same. So it's like certain things. It's like, I mean, if I do breath work every day, every morning for a hundred days, for the rest of my life, I'll, I'll be able to enjoy a big part of my day or, you know, this chunk of my day. At least get down to this point of, like, I enjoy this wholeheartedly, mm-hmm. this period of my day, you know. And, and so that's all. So you constantly have that that contentment. Yeah, and like you it say, you can go to day, sleep. Like you can go to sleep like you used your day like most people can't. And Yeah. Yeah, and that's the great thing with the breath. You know, the breath is going to, like, pretty much any uh, old thing, things that haven't been processed, it just brings all that to the, you know, to a light. It, it brings all the garbage in your bowels up because, again, it's pushing on the tissue, and then you're releasing uh, more garbage. And so, you know, all that, all that gets exposed with the breath work. It's really a complete practice in a lot of ways. So what about when you're um, in a, like you're really in a traumatized state or I'll say when I'm, when I'm really in a traumatized state and that's like a natural thing where your body just cuts off your breath and you, you know what I mean? Like people have anxiety attacks and those kind of things. Like, um, have you ever experienced that? Ah uh, man, I, I've definitely I've had a couple of anxiety attacks, man. Yeah, at different points in my life. Uh, oh. When I was uh, when I was about to when I was about to sign for uh, which school I was gonna which you know scholarship I was gonna take, I had an anxiety attack, and then I had an anxiety attack when I was like seventeen, my senior year of high school, because I was worried about where I was trying to get into school and stuff. Mm-hmm. So like. I definitely have had that shortness of breath and how it feels on your chest and how you just like pretty much in panic mode, but you know, you can't really do nothing about it. It's like, it's not been there. It sucks. It, nah, but, um, I, I, I feel like you just got to develop some kind of rhythm in the breath, whether it be, you just got to make it more complete. Even if it's not locked, you know, you're not locking the bond yeah. and all that type of stuff. You know, just make it more complete, make it a full breath, get it to the top of the breath, Clinch, you know what I mean? You push the uh, push the diaphragms out where you get the, as much of the lungs filled as possible. Stop at the top for a moment to, you know, appreciate the breath a little bit there, you know. And then that's how you charge it, appreciating it pretty much. And then it, that's uh, every, everything that gets appreciated, appreciate. Yeah, to make it simpler, it, I think that, so, yeah, that point there. I mean, yeah, appreciating what... I mean, if you have that concept in mind, you can take away lots of the complexity um, of of what you should be doing in your mind and everything, and particularly with your breath to help yourself. If you can hold some appreciation, you, you're probably centering yourself better. Yeah, it's just a totally different air when you charge it with, with, with something like that. Like, it's just totally different. Like, it might just be... You might just be inhaling a, a bunch of, you know, light particles that could be scattered about however, which way. But then once you've like really gotten behind your, your will and you directed your energy like that, it, as soon as that breath comes in and you start to charge it, it just, 
you're going to want to hold it longer and longer because you can start to feel the cranial sacral rhythm. You can feel the backward flow in motion for the for the uh, the chi or whatever you want to call it, the prana going circulating through the body, whatever. Um, that's once you get in touch with that, then you can see how you know each breath could be just appreciated. If you appreciate each breath more and more, how much how much more peaceful your life would be from moment to moment. It's like it just changes everything once you get in touch with that. Yeah, it's the best feeling ever if you feel like you appreciate your breath. Like, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's like, it's just a, a zest for life, really, in a lot of ways. But it's a, it's a deep calmness because it takes you into that, it takes you into that, that parasympathetic nervous system to where, you, you know, you're just so calm, you know, less heartbeats per minute, and you're just way more steady. And acting from that place, is way more composed than acting from the sympathetic nervous system where it's fight or flight, adrenaline pumping easily, just being distributed, you know, immediately. So it's like, that's that's the thing I feel like, uh, if, you know, where you're behaving from, if you're behaving from a more animal sympathetic nervous system, then the energy is already going, you know, like it's difficult to stop that momentum, you know, like if you're, Sometimes you might have to move, but if you do it from a place of being still, then you make the move that you need to make, you know, and there's no haste and there's no waste. It's just you make the move, you know what I mean? And then you can be still again and then make your next move or whatever. But if you're constantly moving and the momentum is taking you in a way and then you just take what you can get and then you just take what you can get and you yes. settle it in all ways. So, yeah, it, it just creates a, a leeching society. Um the people just don't know. They're not in touch with their breath. It's just not, they're not in touch. It's a huge suppression of breath, especially with, with the weed thing and, um, you know, cigarettes in general, vaporizing anything, oil and all that, inhaling that. It's not, it's really, uh, gonna, you know, block the breath, you know, and directly block, block the, block the breath. I mean, you want to have as many cells breathing as possible, but, you know, even if you have a bunch breathing and then you just go directly into blocking the lungs, it's like, you know, really like blocking a huge uh, factory for prana. And uh, Oh my God, is it? But it's, it's obvious how hard it is for people. I mean, obviously most people aren't focused, like realizing how important breath is, but it's obviously really hard for people to drop into a really deep breathing practice just... Like, so if someone was just to sit down at the edge of their bed and start to try to breathe, ah, uh, like, I, I don't know, it's just evidence with the amount that people block their breath with food or block it with smoking or block it with whatever they block it with, or if whether they block their anxiety or their emotions with drugs or distractions or things like that. Um, yeah, yeah, it would be so... It's usually so much for the average person to just change their habits to where they can get start to get a decent breath to where they can see the contrast. You know, like, yes. if you're like, if you never see the contrast, obese, you're not understanding like function, anything. Yeah, if you're functionally obese, like your breath sessions are going to be whack. You know what I mean? You're not going to have. You know what I mean? It's not going to be. They're not going to be what they could be. You need to really, you know, start walking more and then <laughs> yeah, eating. Uh, foods that aren't mucus forming and just continually flushing and just flushing and flushing and flushing until you can get a decent breath and then you can get that that contrast you know what I mean like you the only way you can probably get in touch with the breath is through moving around working out or something walking like mm -hmm. I don't think for it to be effective for it to really cycle through the body because like if the lungs can't really expand and it's just so much garbage it's not even going to cycle through the body like it could and then they're just going to get frustrated like I've been here for so long and it's like you need to get this brick out of your <laughs> out of your uh, ascending colon and this other brick out of your descending colon before you can think about breathing dog like you know what yeah. I mean I don't know and there's yeah there's so many so many layers and I think that because we've already had such a long conversation that we should do the the um death and the one grand dream talk in another in another talk if you're up for it and I can yeah, I can send you a song it. But that song that I was thinking of. 
But um, what was I going to say? Just one sec. I forget. <laughs> we'll see if I can come up with it later. But I guess... Oh yeah, I know what I wanted to end on. So for a lot of people, like you're saying, it's these bricks in their, in their digestive tract or just hor horrible eating habits or um, that, that are their blockage. But for a lot of people, and I would say a lot of people that are on depression or anxiety medications, which is like a huge amount of people, and even people who aren't are exhausted emotionally, that like the real thing is like having very sort of gu guarded hearts. Everything's connected, so I'm not trying to oversimplify and say like it's all about the heart. But I remember reading in your Heal in One Day book about, like, you, you, focus, you focus on unconditional love. Like, if your, your heart sort of ha what you also said that love is the greatest detoxification process. And it's obviously, like, um, everyone knows that it feels like the clearest path forward. And, like, it's your clearest way to start being able to develop your breath if you have a have an open heart or a clear heart. And the opposite of that is having like a very fearful heart. And I don't have a specific question about this, but I just from your experience, where I'm sure you've <laughs> gotten through plenty of your own phases of having to realize, okay, like I am not focusing on unconditional love right now. Um, I, yeah, so what my whole spiel about that is really just, okay, lots of people have relatively clean bodies. They, like, eat relatively organic, all that kind of stuff. But um, there's still this block with understanding what it actually means to focus on unconditional love. Do you have anything to say about that? Yeah, I mean, if, it, if, you're, if you're in a conditional love uh, way of being, then it's just, it's it's just so many uh there's so many other conditions and so many other blockages you know what I mean? so many yes. other limitations that, that come with that just being in that so it just it that's really what it comes down to you know it's, a, it's so much stuff is learned behavior you know so much stuff is really learned and ingrained you know deeply ingrained behavior and um it yeah uh. That's that's what a lot of it will boil down to. You know, a lot of it really is going to boil down to people that don't, that haven't exposed themselves to certain things because it's just the fear. You know, at this point, it's just, it's just deep fears and mm -hmm. acting from an living in an animal on animal mode for so long that it just it just makes people behave from a conditional place because that's that's just that's the conditioning itself. You know, it's, mm -hmm. it's, you know, it's just a it's I don't know how you could ever change it unless you seen it being exemplified. Like people need to, you know, it, yes. it, it needs to be happening. That's yeah, you need to people. have it reflected at you. Yeah, it'd be the only way to like generate an echo inside of somebody's being, to where they'd be like, "Man, I, you know what? Maybe you know, maybe this isn't me." Yes, but I feel like just that concept of thinking about conditional versus unconditional love inside yourself can help create a bit of that echo <laughs> for yourself. Um, so could you, could you say one more thing about, yeah, this isn't me. I feel like that is one of the most important things to start being able to realize in yourself. Like if you can sort of check yourself and see like, is, is this me or is this not me? Obviously, it's always you, but I, you know what I'm, I mean. Like when you're fully in your breath, yeah, you're no, like I, I know this is, this is me. Yeah, like as far as the discernment, it's based on like yeah. the characteristics and just and staying close with the characteristics of it. You know, it's like yeah, that's why the Tao Te Ching is really a dope book because it's pretty much talking about the characteristics or the expressions of of the Tao itself. Like because the Tao is unfathomable; it's not even you can name or grasp, but if you can get the mark of its characteristics or, you know, the, the patterns that it leaves, you know, it declares pattern as the simplest to follow and everything. If you, uh, if you can get a, a hold of that, then you can stay, you know, close to the consciousness. You know, you, you never really know 
anything in a sense of like consciousness. It's total awareness. Mm -hmm. So it's not like, you know, it's just, it's just knowing like, okay, these characteristics have unfolded. So, uh, I know as far as like what these characteristics, what this coincides with, this is the consciousness. This is the one that is, uh, you know, delivering this. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and if I'm, if I get certain other signals in the body that or you know, uh, thoughts in the body and then, you know, thoughts in the, in, thoughts in your head, I, it's still the body, but thoughts in your head and then I get a signal in the lower body in the bowel somewhere, then you know, like, that this is where this is coming from. It's not from the characteristics of, of this uh, voice. It's still part of you. It's yes. not uh, of, of the highest nature. Yeah. It's, it's a, you know, it's just of a lower nature within within my being. That's where this voice is coming from. That's where the microphone currently is. So that's kind of like it's just based on the characteristics. Like how limiting is the voice? Um, and it's, it's more so like the and and it's more of a presence thing. You know, like you can kind of you can kind of feel it in the in the spine and your body in general. Like when you you're in a place where you can really discern like okay this is this is uh, i'm online <laughs> i'm really online yes. right now you know and and when that's not you know when you're not in that place of expression where that understanding is there it's kind of like you pivot to it you know you pivot to that super consciousness state where you have like total oneness awareness and then once you reach a peak in that then you go into another state of kind of like unconsciousness and just going through things and then another period of like reflection and then you hit the you hit another point and it's like it's kind of like that's how it is like experience uh, reflection yeah. super conscious experience <laughs> reflection super conscious like it's just like a kind like a kind yeah. of thing but you know some people are just getting conscious like in other ways in life you know what i mean like their consciousness is like different levels of survival like they know how to do this their consciousness now, at one point in their life, they were having four hustles. Now they reach this other part in their life where they have seven hustles. Mm -hmm. So it's just like, you know what I mean? Like yeah. they, they're evolving, they're evolving in their own field or whatever, in their own rate. You know what I mean? Like their <laughs> focus is there, so yeah. that's where they're evolving at. Yeah. So, but like, you know, um, but everybody, everybody's kind of going through it, and that's the oneness of it. Like, yeah, the person, that, the person that has like total three hundred and sixty awareness throughout their day. Like they're they're going through this whole process intimately, and you know what I mean, to where it's uh it's being expressed fully, you know, somebody, and that it, that mm -hmm. should just create crazy ripples. And everybody, it's yes. setting the tone basically. There's always somebody or some people holding it down to where they are fully immersed in the moment and setting the tone to where it can ripple down into the people that eventually just no one's in the moment. Everybody's in the hypothetical mm -hmm. <laughs> and. It's just, it's a. Sometimes it's, it's I wonder wild. if there are people holding it down, but <laughs> there must be. It, yeah, I mean, because they wouldn't be, they wouldn't be talking. They would just be holding it down. You know what I mean? Like, yes. Be, yeah, somewhere being, you know, probably butt naked doing the breathing. Yeah, they wouldn't you know be I mean? putting like, Zen like, sayings yeah. online. Yeah, they're in another place doing it, doing it the fully and being like constantly in uh, first person mode like no yes no real like vanity like that no parasite nest yeah yeah so last thing what would you say what could what does it mean to do the wrong thing gently oh uh, like um when you when you start to go like you know going down a path like people people often feel like they have a bunch of options in life or whatever but it's probably really only it is always really one path and everything else is kind of an illusion mm -hmm. but like if you stay in a place where you like thinking about it and contemplating it and you're not like pushing the energy like as far as your daily cycle if your actions aren't committed to that then you're not going to get the contrast so like if you start to go and do things like say you want to play tennis and then you start to go practice and give your energy to tennis then you know as as you go through that process you'll you'll really you'll feel like where your contentment really lies like is it really in this is it really in doing this and like 
Mm-hmm. If you really go and start to push that energy in that way, you can, the wrong path will reveal the right path, you know. Mm-hmm. It's just that some people have a lot of energy and it, uh, they, it, it, it's actually uh, to their detriment because they feel like, well, I can just still conquer this. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> so people continually hurt themselves, with, you know, or stifle their, their growth because they have the energy to do it. <laughs> Crazy. Yeah. yeah. And I was just thinking about it also in the way of, like on the subtler level of, not that it's more subtle, but when you notice that you're not with with yourself totally, like you, whether it's shallow breath or whatever, you just know that... um you're not really connected to yourself. If that, ought, for me, if that automatically goes into a self-punishing mindset, which it almost always does to me, it it only uh, creates more of the problem, obviously. So doing the wrong thing gently, to me, just has to do with trying to notice when it's not me, but remember consciously my intention to get to me and not um, exclude it from the oneness exclude all those quote unquote lower states from the oneness so much. Um, I get really, I'm really bad mentally. At the, I'm at just doing that. I'm like super conditionally loving to myself as we all are, unfortunately, but yeah. 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 It's just, it's just the process of like, you know, uh, not um, getting so much so caught up in this and that and trying to define everything. Mm-hmm. But the more you try, you know, the more you try to define things and, and separate things, and the more that you see the separation and things, because your, your definitions, you know, they are what they are. Like you know, in order to define other things, you got to you have to define yourself. So you're gonna say like, I'm this person uh, that does this and. On, I'll also enjoy this. I don't enjoy this. So this is who I am. Mm-hmm. And this is the world. Yeah, and then you just replay it over and over again. Yeah. Yeah, and then like it just gets re like it just gets cemented as you Yes. As you like continue as you continue to be like, This is you know, this is a dog. This is how dogs are supposed to be. This is uh you know, this is you know, and everything yes. gets hits the definitions like whereas like if you can kind of tap into the unseen side of things, you can kind of see, like, what, just, just follow the energy in certain ways. Like, if the energy has completely maxed out, then it's, you know, it's going to go in another direction. You know what I mean? You just kind of, just got to follow the energy. Like, if, if the poison exists, the antidote exists, man. Like, mm-hmm. You know, it's kind of yes. like, yes. kind of like that. It's always like that. Like, you know, just seeing it through, like, okay, this process, if I'm going through this process fully, and I'm fully aware, and I'm, you know, getting in touch with my breath, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna go through every, every process with more care anyway. So mm-hmm. it's, it's a lot. It's just much harder for things to get missed if you if you're just doing uh, a little bit more breath work, you know, here and there, and, and not and just not so much thinking about anything. You know, yes. Because if you think if you, if you think about that, like, that's what the breath work does. It really kind of lets you think your thoughts. And get past them. Yeah, it lets you go uh, up through the, uh, through all of them. Yeah, like, so once you, like, done all that uh, filing, then you can kind of just be <laughs> a, 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 an awareness. And it's just, it's a lot less stress. It's a lot less heavy for your physical body. Yeah. Once, you know, the, the identity is in that place. Like, when you feel like you can kind of rest, recharge without having to worry about just worrying. Yeah, your own just, mind, yeah. Yeah. Cool. Thank you. And if you guys want to go learn how to breathe correctly, go to Taylor's YouTube channel, which is Dow Lore, um, T-A-O space L-O-R-E, and I'll put the link in the description. Is there anything else you want to say about fear before we go? Oh, man. I mean, it's, again, it's kind of like how, how it's kind of the other side of everything having this other, you know, having this flip side to it, you know, fear and love or whatever. Yeah. 
kind of like it's kind of like the the flip side of of the coin yeah. that gets experienced. But you know, if you can remain I, I, with an identification that is uh, not the body, mm-hmm. then you can kind of discern uh, your overall trajectory. And like that's the you know that's why the that's why the calm thing, you know, the, like you know, that's why uh, as far as Lao Tzu, he was saying, like you know, when you realize where you where you come from, you know, it's you, you become amused, like you're like, man, this doesn't matter, and I'm going to where I came from. So, mm-hmm. but it has to be like genuinely realized. Yeah, <laughs> <be conceptualized. laughs> that's it. That's the perfect like segue into what we'll talk about next time. I think. So. All right, word, word. All right, thank you. No doubt. Have a good one. Yeah, I'll breathe. I'll be breathing. Bye. Yeah, do that. Yeah. (laughs) All right, bye.